Thomas Alive to Die presents Birders Books The original Borders Bookstore was located in Ann Arbor, Michigan, United States where it was founded in 1971 by brothers Tom and Louis Borders. The first Borders Bookshop opened at 209 South State Street, Ann Arbor in 1971. Later they moved the retail bookshop to much larger quarters that had become available down the street at 303 South State in the former location of the Wagner & Son Men's Clothing Store. The old shop was renamed Charing Cross Bookshop. The downtown Ann Arbor store moved across the street again in 1994 to 612 East Liberty at the southwest corner of Liberty and State Streets in the building once occupied by the defunct Jacobson's department store. Although not the original location it was identified as Borders No. 1 because it was the flagship store. Former Hickory Farms president Robert DiRomuldo was hired in 1989 to expand the company. Borders was acquired in 1992 by Kmart which had acquired mall-based book chain Walden Books eight years earlier. Kmart had struggled with the book division having first tinkered with the assortment and later with discounting. In the Borders acquisition Kmart merged the two companies in hopes that the experienced Borders senior management could bail out floundering Walden Books. Instead many of the Borders senior management team left the company leaving behind an even larger and more unwieldy division for Kmart executives to handle on the heels of aggressive expansions by rivals Barnes & Noble and Crown Books. Facing its own fiscal problems and intense pressure from stockholders Kmart spun off Borders in 1995 in a highly structured stock purchase plan. The newly formed company was initially called Borders Walden Group and by the end of the same year renamed simply Borders Group. Borders was rumored to open stores in Canada starting with a 50,000-square-foot retail store in Toronto. However this was rejected for failing to meet Canadian ownership regulations for book retailers. In 1997 the company established its first international store in Singapore occupying 32,000 square feet in Wheelock Place Orchard Road which was then the largest bookstore there. It subsequently opened another 41 stores in Australia, Ireland, New Zealand and the United Kingdom and bought 35 books etc. stores throughout Britain from Philip and Richard Joseph. In 1998 Borders UK Ltd was established as a Borders Group subsidiary and with its Borders and Books etc. After quickly becoming one of the country's leading booksellers due to the fierce competition in the UK marketplace a number of the books etc. stores closed in Borders UK Ltd was sold in 2007 to a private equity investor. In the third quarter of 2006 the Singapore store emerged as the best performing among the group's 559 outlets with the highest revenue generated per square meter. At one point the highest grossing location in U.S. territory was a remodeled and expanded store in Puerto Rico generating $17 million in sales annually. On November 26, 2009 Borders UK Ltd was placed into administration which is the equivalent to Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in the United States. At that time the Borders bookshop chain in the UK started a closing down sale in all of its 45 stores. On December 14, Borders UK converted to liquidation and announced it was going out of business. All UK stores were closed by the end of the year. By the end of 2009 all of Borders directly owned overseas locations had been sold or closed leaving only the franchise stores in Dubai, Oman and Malaysia. In 1998 Philip Pfeffer succeeded Robert DiRomuldo as chief executive. In 2003 Borders had 1,249 stores using the Borders and Walden Books names. In 2004 Borders reached an agreement with Starbucks subsidiary Seattle's Best Coffee to operate cafes in its domestic superstores under the Seattle's Best brand name. In March 2007 Borders Group announced it would scale down the number of Walden Books outlets it had by half to about 300 in the next year. Also in March 2007 Borders Group announced the disposal of its Ireland and UK businesses including its books etc. Business in the UK with the aim of revitalizing the core US business however it was also announced that Borders Group would retain the paper chase stationary business. International expansion would be likely to continue via franchising. 
In September 2007 it was announced that the 42 Borders and 28 Books etc. Stores in Ireland and the UK had been sold to private equity group Risk Capital Partners for an initial £20 million. However after changing hands in 2009 Borders in Ireland and the UK went into administration on November 26, 2009. After failing to find a buyer all the stores were shut on December 22, 2009. In 2008 Borders opened 14 concept stores nationwide which included a digital center offering select electronic devices such as MP3 players, digital photo frames and the Sony Reader. The concept stores were located in Ann Arbor, Michigan, Denver, Colorado, Las Vegas, Nevada, Panama City Beach, Florida, Noblesville, Indiana, Monroeville, Pennsylvania and Alameda, California. The latest Borders Digital Center opened in Alameda in January 2008. In late 2007 Borders installed digital video monitors in select stores. The monitors displayed special programs as well as news sports and financial information provided through Ripple Networks Inc. Borders Group also launched a customer appreciation program called Borders Rewards. In contrast to a membership from Barnes & Noble which was a paid-for membership that entitled customers to discounts Borders Rewards was a free program with discount coupons and the ability to earn store credit for purchases. In addition in September 2009 following the lead of Barnes & Noble the chain discontinued its fee-based wireless service provided by T-Mobile and began implementing a free Wi-Fi network provided by Verizon. The last year that Borders made a profit was in 2006. Its yearly income dropped by $1 billion over the next four years. In March 2007 the company announced the end of its marketing alliance with Amazon begun six years earlier as well as plans to launch its own online business in early 2008. In March 2008 Borders Group announced the intention to sell the chain because of financial difficulties. Borders Books was rumored to have approached Barnes & Noble in hopes of a buyout. The chain was in debt having increased its financial instability by borrowing 42.5 million US dollars in March from Pershing Square Capital Management the company's major stockholder to keep the company running through the remainder of the fiscal year. The loan was said to have a very high interest rate of 12.5% which meant that the chain would have to post a significant profit to stay afloat in the future. Following the announcement of the loan borders shares dropped 28.6% to $5.07 a share. The shares continued to drop throughout the year and as of December 11, 2009 Borders stocks were trading at $1.30 on the NYSE which was up almost a point from a low of $0.530 on January 28, 2009. On January 5, 2009 the company announced that Ron Marshall would immediately take over as chief executive. Former CEO George L. Jones received a severance package of $2.09 million. Mark Beerley was also promoted to Chief Financial Officer replacing Ed Wilhelm. The changes in management were due to Borders holiday sales having fallen by 11.7% to $868.8 million. On January 13, Mick McGuire, a former partner at Pershing Square became chairman of the board of directors. On March 30, 2009 Marshall announced that the loan from Pershing Square would be extended for another year at an interest rate of 9.8%. This combined with a series of layoffs and new promotional deals with major publishers caused Borders stock to rise. Within a week it had topped the $1 mark. By mid-April it had approached $2. As a result the company cancelled plans to ask its shareholders for permission to perform a reverse stock split. It was paid in full on March 31, 2010. On November 5, 2009 Borders announced that it would close some of its Walden Books stores in an effort to improve the profitability of its specialty retail operations. By January 2010 182 stores had been closed. Holiday sales figures for 2009 were disappointing with total sales of $846.8 million down 14.7% from the previous year. On January 26, 2010 CEO Ron Marshall resigned to become president and CEO of ANP. Following his announcement Borders stock fell below $1 per share. During his tenure at Borders all of the top executive officers resigned including some who had been with the company for over 20 years. 
Mike Edwards Vice President and Chief Merchandising Officer was appointed interim CEO. On May 21, 2010 it was revealed that Bennett S. L. E. Bow Chairman of Vector Group was making a large private investment in Borders stock. As a result Howard Lorber President and CEO of Vector Group and he joined the Board of Directors. Following the resignation of Chairman McMaguire L. E. Bow was elected Chairman of the Board. On June 3 L. E. Bow became CEO of Borders Group. Mike Edwards was confirmed as president of Borders Group and CEO of Borders Inc., the company's principal subsidiary. The company reported significant losses for the third quarter compared to 2009. At the end of 2010 Business Week and BBC News reported that Borders would be delaying its payments to publishers for inventory already received to preserve liquidity. This was prompted by problems in refinancing its credit facilities. On February 16, 2011 the company announced that it had filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection listing $1.275 billion in assets and $1.293 billion in debts in its filing. The company also announced the liquidation and closing of 226 stores. Two private equity firms the Gores Group and Najafi Companies expressed interest in purchasing half of the remaining Borders Group stores. Borders Group announced on July 1, 2011 that it had found a bidder direct brands that would acquire the assets for $215 million and the assumption of $220 million in debt. A group of Borders creditors rejected the direct brands takeover bid in July 2011. Borders filed for an auction and the motion was approved by a judge however the bid deadline expired on July 17 without a bidder. A United States bankruptcy judge approved a petition to liquidate this resulted in the company converting their Chapter 11 case to Chapter 7. On July 22, 2011 Borders started closing its remaining 399 stores with a phased rollout. Business operations ceased in September 2011. Former rival and the current second largest chain of bookstores in the United States Books A Million had made a bid to acquire 30 to 35 stores and their assets on July 19, 2011 the day liquidation was approved by the courts. However the two sides were unable to come to an agreement suitable to all parties. Books A Million later resurrected its offer to buy portions of Borders Group purchasing the leases for 14 stores primarily in New England and Pennsylvania. Borders USA closed its remaining stores on Sunday, September 18, 2011. The last remaining Singaporean Borders store in Parkway Parade Shopping Center closed its doors at 9 p.m. after a final sale on Monday, September 26, 2011. However international Borders stores are still operating in the United Arab Emirates Oman and Malaysia. These Borders stores are now under different ownership from the original Borders group and were unaffected by their store closures. The Borders online store closed on September 27, 2011 at 10.30 p.m. Eastern, directed them to Barnes & Noble. As part of Borders ceasing operations we Barnes & Noble acquired some of its assets including Borders brand trademarks and their customer list. The Federal Bankruptcy Court approved this sale on September 26, 2011. The Borders brand in Singapore was purchased by Popular Holdings in late 2012. In an attempt to revive the brand a single Borders store opened in Westgate for a trial period in 2013 but that store was shortly after converted to a regular popular bookstore. It was a dark and stormy night. Using whatever means necessary, Jack Ryan confronts a new breed of zombies. Zombies. Oh. Oh. They're stumbling around going, Oh no, my love. Why is your cheek so pale? Because her face actually contained part of the code. And the main character comes running out of the cave, and there's cobwebs all over, and the music's going, You know, gotta be the baby. <laughs> because the quicker you let go of old cheese, the sooner you can enjoy green eggs and ham. I do not like them. In that diner, she throws her head back and starts going, uh. Where Cujo stood at the door and from his chest came a hateful, nightmarish sound. Whoever owned my other glass slipper would most surely become. The Cinderella story 
Here in Augusta. Couldn't have been the scene of the murder because Stephanie Plum was actually. Oh, that chick that was like frozen up in the air, like shh. Then he drops the hole through the door and he sticks his face through the door. You remember that? And then he yells, Merry Christmas, Mr. Potter. <laughs> Merry Christmas, you old building and lover. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Bedford Falls. Bedford Falls. If you have any fond memories, please indicate it at the comments below. Thanks for watching, subscribe and like.